know, it was six years old, I saw this television series that was uh, popular in, called Adventures in the Fifth Continent, about a captain, his grandchild, two journalists, a few Australian animals traveling in a boat around Australia and having adventures. That's getting a big image in my mind. So I used to tell my parents, I grow up, I will go to Australia. And my father used to tell me, good on you. And then you take me there. After I finished university, I decided to travel around the world. Then I remember this old child's idea. No? And then I said, well, why not try Australia? Uh, I did research and I found about the migration protocol. Uh, the rules are quite simple. Learn the language, work hard, save money, don't go into trouble, and look for opportunities. It's quite simple. It's written everywhere, but it's very hard to follow. Uh, if you follow it, you could have good opportunities. Uh, the loneliness also. You're going to feel alone, so be ready. Learn to feel very well about yourself. Always try to find help if it's very hard. There's always help available, always. And then the language. The English is very important. The problem was in my mind was more for looking for a job. Is what is first, the chicken or the egg. English or job? Job or English? But English really took me 10 years to learn. And I, whenever I meet somebody, I tell them, look, relax. This is a long ride. It's going to take you 10 years to feel comfortable. And believe me, it's going to be a good 10 years. I come from a migrant family. I think that people are people. This absurd thing about countries and races. If you go a little bit, in my case, it's only a couple of generations. People that might think they live 10, 15 generations in a country. At some point, they probably were somebody that came from another place. Because that's humans. We move around. It has happened since Leon decided I was going to migrate, that I was going to go away because the economic situation was not good in South America. I couldn't see myself seeing the world. I think you mature a lot. Very big experience. Change you all over because you're in a place where you have no one. You have to live from your way. Well, I came to Australia because I fell in love with an Australian man. And yeah, it was pretty funny because I never thought, you know, I'm going to end up in the other side of the world. And when I met him, I never thought this was going to be real, you know, I was going to end up moving here and having a baby. I can say now that I love Vegemite in the mornings, Vegemite on toast, which will sound weird, but it's a really, really weird flavor. I never like thought I was going to eat that. It just tastes horrible. So now I love it. It's just like my morning. How do your parents feel about their only child living on the other side of the world? My mom has always supported my dreams. She knew I really wanted to be here, so she always supported me. My dad, at the beginning, was angry and sad. It was a weird combination. He couldn't understand why. And but then they start getting used to it, and they start like knowing my partner long distance in Skype. Then they were really and it's like they, you really appreciate these people that like put their lives and family for their country. I, yeah, I really like them. Back home, you go to a restaurant and you're served in any restaurant. It doesn't matter how cheap or expensive it is. Some will come to you and they will take your order and bring you back the food. We happen to go to the RSL, me and my family. A few days after we arrived to Australia, we sat down, 15 minutes, nothing happened. And it was extremely weird and we also didn't want to speak too much because you really it's hard to open your mouth when you know that you will have to explain and explain yourself again just to get some food so well eventually we realized that we had to go to the count they were going to give us some sort of beeper thingy and that's i cope with it at the end of the day let's say from the 365 days a year 360 are beautiful and awesome days and i talk to my family and friends on the phone the other five are a bit harder and i miss them a lot when I miss them, I miss them, and there's not many things that can help with that. It probably makes it easier for them. The sense of knowing that being far away is not the end of the world, and they also know the places where I usually hang out. Silly things like if I go to Nara, my dad will ask me to go and have a beer in the local pub because he loved it there. Things like that make it nice and keep it more connected. It's hard to be aware. When the riots happened, my parents didn't know that there were going to be riots. They went out for a walk and they realized that everybody was dressed with flags and their face painted, noisy and police around and things like that. And they realized that it wasn't Australia Day, there wasn't a public holiday. They felt slightly unsafe, but nothing happened to them. My dad is blonde, tall, bulky, he looks like a rugby player and as long as he doesn't open his mouth no one will think that he comes from the other side of the world. Every time someone brings it up 
mainly when I worked outside Sutherland, people tell me, oh, you live there, it's such a racist place, and this and that. And I said, look, it's not like that. People is conservative. I never had any sort of situation at work. I had a few situations here on the street where people call me silly names like whoa or things like that. But at the end of the day... The first time I came out here, I felt very sad. All the neighbors make a party welcoming me. They advise me to not get worried. They are there for me to, in case I need them, their help, come and help me. They taught me how to not get nervous. I said, thank you. I met uh, other people that the same as my neighbors. I said the same. Yes, siempre bien. Después, este, como yo venía con la mentalidad de que tenía que quedarme aquí, no tuve problema para la adaptación. Ando por todos lados con, con mi poquito inglés. Ando por todos lados, me manejo bien. Tengo muchos amigos, una nueva vida verdaderamente. Bueno, yo voy a varios community centers, así que cuando no es un día, un, un día que voy a uno, voy a otro. Bueno, uso pura y exclusivamente el transporte público. Este, bueno, voy a los distintos, por ejemplo, este, voy al a, a un grupo que se llama el Consejo del Cáncer, en Kingsford, este, voy ahí en nombre de, de mi hermana, que falleció de cáncer, pobrecita. Sí, también voy este, a un grupo en Cabra Mata. A mí me interesan mucho las charlas sobre salud, porque yo, por suerte, gracias a la vida, tengo una buena salud, pero... Este, uno se encuentra con gente, habla, cambia opiniones y siempre lo que uno escucha puede servir para otros. Entonces yo voy a charlas también en un community center, eh, charlas so sobre diabetes y enfermedades del corazón en Cabramata. You are so busy. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I think the biggest one is personal space. I didn't know what personal space was until I came to Australia because in Brazil we don't have personal space. We hug, we kiss, we talk about your life. You come and in five minutes I can tell you everything about my life, if I'm married, if I'm not, or how many kids I had, my sexual life, and then you know everything about my life. And in Australia, I learned that people don't talk about everything and they don't touch you and they don't like to be touched. Even in Brazil, as a counselor, as a psychologist, we agreed to be. They thought I was crazy. They didn't like it, of course. They say it was a big grief for everyone. It was a big grief for them because they very connected with my daughter. I think it was a bit traumatic, all the migration process for us. I didn't speak English. I felt very isolated because I was scared to talk with people. And when people speak, I didn't understand one single word. I started to feel desperate. Oh, I just want to stay home. But I had to go because I had my daughter. And I remember the first day when I took her to school and I left her there and I wasn't on outside of the gate crying, crying. But the end of the day, she was playing with the kids and they picked it up very quick. And in three months, she was writing and speaking English. She had English second language support. I was still stuck and I couldn't speak English and I was like, wow, what did they say? And I was kind of really using her to help me to buy things or to communicate with people. We had this reversal role because she was my mom and I was the kid asking her for help because I didn't speak English. Be 100% here and I feel I'm here and I want to be here different that you be here and part of you want to go there. I think it's where you are, you mix with people. It's Chinese, mix with Portuguese, mix with Brazilian, Australian, because the richness, diversity makes this country rich. I truly believe more diverse a country, the stronger When you go to the party, I didn't know you have to bring your own drinks, your own stuff. In Brazil, you don't need to. 
if you invite and if you want to bring something you put on a table and everybody eats everybody share first month here i was invited to go to the party and was drinks there and i took one of this cruiser guava cruiser because i never had before one of the ladies complained because it was her cruise it wasn't i guess little things you don't know you don't know it's a part of the culture I got to leave my bones here. That's that's what they say. One of the writers of my grandfather, he say, "You don't belong. You can't treat the way you born. You can't treat the way you live from my bones because that's not my bones." Family? Did you miss them when you were in no. Australia? No, no, not really. No, I don't miss anymore. I'm sick. I don't feel that. Do you think that might have had anything to do with your time in the seminary? Yeah. Because I never have that family, like you know, like family. I always was different. For, for me to come to here was no problem. It was easy to, for me because I didn't have the family. And the good thing that made me proud is that I came on my own. I have a family. My son, he went to university. My daughter have a good job. He speak a couple of languages and feel like that and something. And that's something for the I arrived on a Sunday. I was staying in a hotel in the CBD. I didn't have a very good impression because everything was closed. My first breakfast in Australia, I had it in a food court. It wasn't very nice and it was raining. It was in the middle of May. It was very dark. But then when I started going to different places, it was very nice. They used to invite me to barbecues, but when I used to look at the barbecue, I used to wonder, why isn't there any more meat? They were only sausages and a little mini steaks. I'm used to, to a giant barbecue. We put the whole parts of the cow on the barbecue. We barbecue everything, including offal. So we eat kidneys and brains and pancreas. Pancreas is a delicacy where I come from. My grandfather left a civil war between Syria and Lebanon a hundred years ago and he ended up in my little town because what it reminded him of the place that he was coming from and my great-grandfather left Italy after the First World War and ended up in Argentina as well. I can imagine how hard it was for them because I don't think they ever saw their relatives again. They never got in contact so we are very lucky in this time. It's amazing how my surname has been all around. I'm proud to be an Australian and I'll try to be a good citizen. My grandmother who lived with us, and this is something we learn in South America, to live with your grandparents at home. And the memories I had from her, they were divine memories. She was the lady who used to go to the market with her little basket to bring the vegetables, to cook, to look after ourselves. She was peaceful and quiet, and yet she was very well respected by all of us. And she was the model and the example I still... So, a couple of weeks later, I was issued a ticket, a Qantas ticket, to come to Australia. I couldn't believe my luck, and I couldn't believe what was going on. So I went to the balcony of my house, which I had a very beautiful house. I used to live in front of a park, and I went to the one side of the park, and I polished with my eyes slowly to the other side of the park, and I said to myself, this is the last time I am seeing this. I don't know why I did say that, but I did. And it was exactly right. Then I went inside my house and I said to my mum, Mum, I'm going to Australia, here is the ticket. It took me a long time to learn to speak reasonable English extremely hard. What I found was the best thing for me was that I did study learning the context as well as learning the language and that was a kind of a plus because at the same time I was learning the English language I was refreshing my educational studies. I am happy to be living in the Sutherland Shire because it's quiet 
And I have a very good neighbors. We don't try to get too close to anybody, and that is characteristic of the Savile and Shire families. Yeah, I am happy with that because I rather like them to be a little bit far away from me too. But now I look at the diversity of people who are living in the Southern Shire, the diversity of people, it makes me very happy to see that I am feeling now that I am not the only one different. That makes me even double secure that I am satisfied with living in the Southern Shire.